Hey YouTube, what's going on? Joseph Vollmer here. And tonight I'm at the shop a little bit late. I'm actually working on some of my own junk. Um, right now I'm working on my 2006 Ranger. I'm gonna show you real quick how to change the blower motor resistor on it. Now the easiest way to tell if your blower motor resistor has gone out is if you turn your air conditioning or your heat on and you only have low and high. And if you only have low and high, then the resistor is shot, um, almost guaranteed. So in this truck, it, you know, it, I'll be honest with you, it's 2006, so it's coming up on 20 years old. And when I started driving it, the blower housing, which is right here on this one, it's under the hood on the passenger side, a mouse had gotten in and it's hard to tell, but there's no insulation left in here. He had taken all that insulation and packed it down into the blower housing. And in the process, he packed it in there and he packed it in around the AC, um, the evaporator for the air conditioning. So I had to take all this out, take it all apart, clean it all out. And the resistor is right down. I don't know if you can see the, the wires go in there. They're right down there where that clip is at the very bottom of the blower. And it, it relies on air moving through the ductwork to keep the resistor cool because it's generating heat as it's, as it's varying the voltage for the motor. So I'm sure it, that's probably what burned it up. It wasn't getting enough airflow. It got overheated and she's toast. So anyway, I'm gonna dive into showing you how to do this. While I'm doing that, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share this video, please. Um, views are what truly drive this channel. Uh, I don't ask for I don't ask for Patreon or anybody to pay for anything to watch anything I put up here. So what drives this channel are the view you guys' views. So please share these videos. Um, but we're gonna dive right into this, and I'm gonna show you how to change this blower motor resistor. It shouldn't be too hard. So now, first thing, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this bolt out here. That should allow me to remove. The cruise control module if you don't have cruise control you won't have this here so you can kind of skip this step but we're just going to unplug oh the connector it's going to be a tight fit so i may not you may not always be able to see um, what i'm doing here 10 millimeter zip that bolt out and sit it somewhere safe then we can take the cruise control module move it over out of the way and then oh, i think i might be able to get my hands in there now you've got a little bit better view right down here is the blower motor relay a resistor excuse me and you can see it's definitely not anything new uh looks like we're gonna have two eight millimeters to get it out and i'm gonna have to unhook that connector so um I'm going to get that done because you're not going to be able to see anything with my hands stuffed down in there. And then I will bring you back and show you what it looks like. So I unbolted it. Now I can pull it out. You see how crusty it is. I left it plugged in because this clip is on the bottom and you can't really get your hand down there to unplug that bottom clip. And boy, that sucker is stuck in there too. Now, sometimes unplugging these things is the hardest part. You can see how rusted it is. We even got a little bit of fluff still stuck in it. I thought I had most of that cleaned out, but... So here's the new resistor. Still in the bubble wrap. I'm gonna leave it that way for a minute, but it comes with a new pigtail. So we're just gonna wire in the new pigtail because I highly suspect that that one is probably uh, melted in, and that's why we can't get it out. I normally don't like using butt splices, but in a situation like this, they should be just fine. Normally I would solder everything.
Now you just want to be careful you don't crimp down on so much that you break through the actual plastic because these are heat shrink butt splices. So once I get the other side spliced in, I'll get the heat gun. We'll heat them all up, shrink them down. That'll seal them, keep water and contaminants out. I'm going to try and pull this up here where you can see it fairly well. I'm going to orient the, these and try and orient these in the same manner so that you want to make sure, since these are all black, that you keep the same pin in this one to the same pin in this one. So we're going to clip our green one first. And that goes, clip it, get it stripped. And then the green one, you can see by orient it where I got the two stacked and then two side by side. That's our top pin, so two stacked. I know it's hard to tell. That's my top pin right there. So we're gonna insert him in there. Crimp her down nice and tight, and then repeat the process with the rest of them. Now you could cut all these wires at once and just match them back up to their position based on color code, but really I think it's six and one half dozen the other. You, you're either chasing back the color codes or you're taking your time and doing one at a time it doesn't i don't think it's if it saves you time it's not going to be much time Okay, time to get the heat gun. All right, we'll let that cool down a minute. While it cools down, I'm gonna move that off to the side. And then we'll, I'll get that, try and reinstall that resistor or install the new resistor, very phrase. Should go in there just like that. Ooh, those are still a little warm. comes the fun part I gotta get the screw started and I know you guys can't see much down in there okay that one's started enough it's not gonna fall out This one's going to be harder when you get my fingers in between the evaporator box and the resistor, but I think I can do it. Okay, that's in. And I, thankfully I have this electric ratchet. Makes my life a lot easier. Just go nice and easy. We're just going to zip those down now they're in then we can see 
work our plug in around. It should plug in just like that, I think. I'll know here in a second. It'll either fit or it won't. Maybe I need to turn it around, I can't tell. Okay, there we go. Then turn it around. There we go. Two clicks, she's locked in. Now we'll go inside the truck and double check. Oh, let me turn this off. That way you can hear the blower. And I should have all four speeds now. So. Low. Me. There we go. Now I have all four speeds. Which is kind of nice. During the winter, I didn't mind. I just adjusted the temperature. But during the summer, I don't necessarily like to adjust the temperature. I just like to run the AC on full cold and vary the blower speed to keep, keep maintain the, my desired internal temperature. And then we're just going to slide our cruise control box back in. Slide that back in. Now, 10 millimeter bolt right there. Find my socket that I, oh, misplaced again. Run it down. Make sure our plug-in is plugged back in. And we're done. Just gonna pick tools up. So, guys, uh, that's all it takes to change a blower motor resistor in one of these trucks. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Please don't forget to share the video, rate, rate the video as well. And subscribe to the channel. I think I already said that. At any rate, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.